Learning Research Group's School of the Future project takes place in a Boston elementary school. Director Seymour Pepperd. The Hennigan School is a public inner city elementary school. It was selected in part because of the composition of its student body. 40% black, 40% Hispanic, 18% Caucasian, 2% Asians. From the side of academic performance, it has a magnet school program and is able to draw a certain number of children who are put in what are called advanced work classes. Then it has a core of children in regular inner city classes. And in addition, it has a developed special needs program. To be a school of the future, one has to do more than bring technology. One has to create a culture. Above all, we have to tackle the problems of demographics that are represented in the school. This is an attempt to make a sketch of what a school of the future might be like. Now, nobody really knows what the future will be like, but we know what it won't be like. We know it won't be lots of children sitting in desks with pencil and paper writing all the day. We know that these new technologies, these computers, will be an important part of it. If you go into any school or any home, you'll find many pencils, many crayons, many paintbrushes, because these are instruments that people have made part of their lives. They use the pencil whenever they have a need for it, to draw, to write a story, to calculate. And so the computer, it's the natural instrument for doing mathematics, for music, for a hundred other things. And our goal here is to make it sufficiently part of the culture of the place that everybody uses it when it's needed. There are many aspects to what goes on in the school. We see children here writing stories. In other parts of the school, we see music. We see very special projects like Lego Logo. This might sound like playing with toys, but that's just what's so clever about it. They are playing with toys in a very sophisticated way. The Lego Logo project is one in which children build with the construction set Lego and then interface their construction with the computers so that they can control them. The children are learning to program. They're learning important ideas about motion, about feedback. They're learning principles of engineering design. Above all, they're learning that knowledge is a unified thing and that the scientific and formal and mathematical knowledge is not something separate from their passion for toys, from the things they did since they were small children before they even came to school. For a long time, I've dreamed that music should have a very different role in the lives of children and how they learn. It's a strange fact about music that while we expect children to be creative in all other domains, we only expect them to reproduce other people's creative work in music. We expect children to make their own drawings, write their own stories, compose their own poems. We don't expect them to compose their own music. And this is a peculiar state of affairs which might be related to the nature of musical technology. With the computer as a musical instrument, it becomes possible to create a piece of music and hear it independently of your own performance skill. It does not mean sitting children in front of a computer all day or even all their music time. They work with the computer, they work with real instruments, they even make their own instruments. Our goal here is not to take over the school of computers. Our goal is not to move in with a computerized curriculum. Our goal is better described as trying to build a computer culture. And this is what this project is about, to get experience in how to grow a new kind of learning environment in which a computer culture will be solidly and creatively embedded.